Well, the reason I chose to look at this project was because I, I regularly take the, the route from Westminster to Canary Wharf. And as you descend down into Westminster Station, you see the scale of the excavation that must have been required to get the Jubilee Line extension in place. And you see the cross-cutting um, escalators going down there. And it just struck me as a piece of engineering, uh, both mechanical as well as civil. So I was intrigued to read further into the report. And as you, you read what was done, um, not only have you got uh, tunneling across a very dense and, and compact part of London. Um, it, it spans quite a significant distance. Uh, it is the first project to be done in 40 years since the Victorian era uh, in terms of this scale uh, of project. And they have not only the Westminster uh, station to build with real concern about whether it would impact on Big Ben and the stability of the Houses of Parliament foundations, um, but they built it right under Port Collis House and, and thankfully they decided to co-locate those two projects. But then you've got Canary Wharf which actually had West India Keys that they had to drain and the scale of the excavation at Canary Wharf if you visit that station and you see all the interfaces now into the retail areas it, it's quite impressive and um, you know it's it's not a simple piece of engineering or a simple piece of architectural design to be done. And they brought both those elements together. You know, the, the glass canopy at Canary Wharf is quite a, a, a novel uh, implemented idea. And then at London Bridge, I hadn't uh, uh, understood, but the, the London Bridge station is built on a number of old vaults over many, many years, built by different railway companies, so not to consistent standards. And so they've actually had to build the station around quite some complex existing infrastructure uh, and build it to modern standards. And um, it's, it's no surprise that there was a lot of attention in the Jubilee Line project on health and safety and fire uh, regulations post the King's Cross fire disaster, if you recall. So they really implemented the best systems of ventilation and fire um, uh, that they could. And uh, they've also implemented the design standards for the civil works the last 200 years. So really gone for it in terms of uh, the, the scale of what they were trying to take on. And then just because I, I guess they felt that they had to bring in novelty, they decided to introduce the uh, platform doors, the, the glass platform doors at each station to improve safety. Never been done before in the UK, but, but not too novel. Um, they introduced first of a kind rolling stock. And, and I actually quite like the trains on the Jubilee line. They're quite uh, spacious. Uh, they're not quite as noisy as some of the other underground lines that you can take. And you actually get a phone signal on those trains, which you don't get in, uh, in anywhere else in the, in the underground. But they then tried to introduce um, um, moving block signaling. That was truly novel, unproven. And actually they ran into problems later in the project where they had to actually change back to uh, fixed block signaling with quite some significant impact and consequence to the cost and schedule of the project. And my experience on, on unique and novel design is you have to de-risk it before you implement it in a project. And that's either by way of um, testing at the vendor's works or having someone else do it before you and prove that it, it works. But to take on something that's truly, truly novel is, is a real risk on a mega project because you know time waits for no person. Time is very, very expensive because you've got such an enormous uh, amount of resource all working at one time. So you don't want that um, novel technology to trip you up at, at any point in time. And the sheer scale of systems uh, uh, integration on this project anyway, the fact that you've got uh, a dedicated control center, you've got the 11 stations and all the ticketing halls, you've got the signaling systems and the rolling stock to integrate. It was on a scale, you know, not done in, in our lifetime at that point in time. Um, and the good news is they finally got it built and got it working. And um, I think there's, there's, there's an interesting reflection, isn't there, of how would we have coped without it? And would London have been the city that it is? Because actually what it really enabled was for London to continue to grow. So by actually providing a, a corridor to Canary Wharf and allowing Canary Wharf to flourish, you've actually realized more than just passenger transport. You really have had that link between growth as well as, as transport. So a fascinating project.